Okay, for this um, unit on percent of change, it's related to the percent of uh, the percent proportion uh, lesson that we just did. But some things to keep in mind right now to help yourself with this is that when we talk about change, you have to indicate whether or not it's an increase or if it's a decrease. So how is it changing? Which we can say simply as, is it going up or is it going down? So indicating how it's changing is going to be a key to this. Without it, it's kind of like you're not putting all the units that you need to. Also, things in this unit are based on how it started, based on the original value. So everything is based on the original value. And then this is a pretty versatile unit. We can start using it to calculate all sorts of things. Just be sure you make it a habit to go back and look at the question that we asked. So the question that you're answering is the one that we are asking, okay? So for example, I'm gonna say we have two brothers. Henry is a baby, he's only 15 inches tall, and then his older brother, Sean, is 58 inches tall. And I'm gonna say that in the last month, they both grew two inches. And I'm gonna say that one of these boys actually grew more than the other. So you think, how can we possibly claim that if both of them grew two inches, which same, seems like the same amount to me, that one grew more than the other? And it depends on how you look at it. And this is where we're going with percent of change. If you look at the amount of change, the two inches, in relation to Henry, who started off pretty small, he started off 14 inch inches, based on, uh, compare that to his older brother who started off 58 inches, 2 fourteenths is a much bigger fraction than 2 fifty-eighths. So as a percentage, and this is kind of like your percent proportion from last time, 2 is 14% of 14, but 2 is only 3% of 58. So we can actually say, if you're looking at how much the, these boys grew as a percentage of how they started, Henry, in fact, grew a lot more than Sean because he started off so much smaller. So those little bitty two inches were worth much more for the little bitty kid, right? Um, percent of change in general, you're going to make it look like this. So it's kind of similar to last time, but now we're going to say this is the percent of change, which is over 100. The starting value is always across from 100. So my original value in the beginning, this goes here. And then you're going to take the absolute value of the change. So normally I subtract the small from the large. And if it happens to be decreasing, you're just going to indicate that at the end. So the absolute value of the change, so take the small from the large, and then if it is going down from where it started, you're just going to say that that's a percent decrease with that down arrow. And there's a ton of applications for this. Um, increases whenever we get into tax and tip and markups. Uh, markup is a percentage that the, the uh, retail stores charge above what they bought items for so that they can make a profit. So they'll buy low and then mark it up, sell high, so that they can get some profit. And the decreases mostly your sales and discounts, okay? So we'll look at a couple really basic examples where you're asked to calculate the percent of change to the nearest whole. So example two, you have a starting value and an ending value. Same thing with example, uh, example one, example two. So now if I'm calculating the percent of change, I'm looking for this. So what is the percent of change? Given that it started with 112 and it ended at $80. So on the top, the amount of change is the difference between these two. So 112 minus 80. So it's going down that match. But as an absolute value, that's a change of 32. So you can solve this in multiple different ways. You can input the 100 if you wish impose 100 if you wish, so that that is 32 times 100 divided by 112. So to the nearest whole percent, we're looking at a 29%. And the last thing that we do is you indicate which direction it's going. So if it starts high and it goes low, this is a 29% decrease. Okay? And in example two, same thing, I want to find the percent change. So that's the one over 100. What value goes in the bottom? Well, my starting value of 54. And what's the amount of my change? What's the difference between these two? 68 minus 54 is 14. So we want to know what percent 14 is of 54. So impo will always work. You can impo the 100. You can impo the 100. And then in your calculator, it would be 100 times 14. And then divided by 54 and you round that thing to the nearest whole percent. So this is about a 26%. And don't forget to tell me how 
uh, how it changed. So if it starts low and it goes high, you have to say that's a 29% uh, or 26% increase. Okay. Um, then in more context, uh, context, say you have a store that buys an item for a wholesale price of $12, so that's the, what the store buys it for, and then they mark it up by 40% to then sell it back to you. Then I'm asking you to calculate what the retail price is. So the retail price is what you're paying for the item in the store. So the wholesale price is what they pay, they mark it up for their profit, and then they sell it to you at the retail price. So this thing, you can find how much uh, the markup is by doing a percent proportion like we did last time. So you figured of $12 that goes here, 40% always goes over 40, the percent goes over the 100, and then you figured we're calculating how much 40% is of 12. So you can do this in a bunch of ways, you can simplify this, you can say this is 2 to 5, and then you can impo the 12, impo the 12, so we got 2 times 12 divided by 5, that's a 24 divided by 5. This is not my answer right now. I'm asking for the retail price. What you've just calculated, this x value, is not how much you're paying for retail, but how much the markup actually is. So they have marked this thing up by $4.80. So to calculate the retail price, you have to take this markup price and then add it to that wholesale price. So if you combine the two of them, the retail price of this item is $16.80, okay? And you can check yourself really fast to see if you can put it in the percent of change equation and see if it works out. So if it started at, for instance, if it started at, let do a little check here. $12 and it went from $12 to $16.80, that's a difference of $4.80. So this is the amount of change. And we'll see if we can't get this to equal 40%. So what percent of 12 is the markup of 480? It should be 40. So just be, be sure. So I can impo 100 here and here. And then 100 times 4.8 is 480. If I divided that by 12, there it is. So 40% does work. Okay. So here I'm asking the retail price. So you find the, per, the dollar amount of the markup and then add that to the wholesale. That's how much you as a customer are paying in the store. All right. So now it's your turn. So do now number one. Here's a couple of questions for you to work through. Uh, both word problems. Go ahead and copy them down first so you can reference them later and then we'll go through them. All right. So on A, you're asked what the sale price is of a $200, that a, a $200 item that's 30% off. So first you can find 30% by putting it in the percent proportion. So 30% goes here of a $200 item goes here. And you can solve for the amount of the discount. So how much are you saving as a dollar value? So this one's pretty easy because you can use the scale factor method. So because the denominator is twice as big as this one, x should be twice as big as 30. So we find that x is $60. However, that's not ask, answering the question. This is how much you're saving um, on a $200 item if it's 30% off. So to answer the question, here's that third reminder that we wrote in the beginning. You have to take the amount of the savings away from its original price. So any time of, of discount is kind of a, a percent decrease. So $200 minus the $60 means that the sale price of this item is $140. Right? Um, on B, you have a retailer that buys something for $110 and then sells it for $300, and I want to know what the percent markup is. So this is a percent of change thing. So you figured my original uh, price for this was 110 so that goes here. That's my starting value. I'm looking for the percent of change, the percent markup. So that goes over 100. And then what goes on the top? It's the amount of the change. So 300 minus 110 gives you... 190 and then you can solve for this however you like so impo 100 always works impo 100 and then in your calculator you can see 100 times 190 divided by that original price of 110 so to the nearest whole we'll say that's 100 about 173 percent 
okay? So this is about 173%. And again, with percent of change, the last thing we have to remember is to tell how it is changing. So if it started low and then it went high, you have to in indicate that that is a percent increase. Okay? Um, then going back to what we, start, we learned last time, we know that the reason we want y'all to learn the percent proportion is because you can actually use this to solve for any of the three things that are missing. A hundred's always going to be there, but this thing will work if you're looking for the whole, the part, or the percent. That's why we have you do this. But if you are looking for the part, there's a faster way to do this using equivalent decimals. And it only works if you are looking for the part. So if you're looking for the part, when I say equivalent decimal, that means you have to be really, really good at making sure you understand what the decimal equivalent for all of these percentages are. So 52%, we changed to a decimal. Well, 52% over 100. Over 100 mathematically means divide by 100. So I take this decimal and I move it to the left. So 52% is this. 195% is 1.92. 3%, if I divide by 100, makes it 0.03. 0.8%, same thing. If I divide by 100, I'm moving it twice. That's equivalent to 0 0.008. So you have to be very, very good at, at understanding this process for the next thing to work. Okay? So from last time, we know how to answer this. What is 50% of, uh, what is 40% of 50? You can set up that percent proportion. So what is, well, we don't know that. 40%, 40 goes over the 100, of 50 means that the 50 is my whole. This will work, and then you, you can solve it easily by seeing, well, this is half of 100, therefore x should be half of 40, so x is 20. Okay? We're going to use this new form of equivalent decimals to solve for this part. Okay, So it is the part that this is working for. So again, let's look at the statement. 40% of 50. Mathematically, 40% is equal to 0.4. Of, in terms of math, if you remember that chart that we gave you a long time ago, of means multiply. So multiply 0.4 by 50, and you should get the same thing. 50 times 0.4 gives you 20. Okay? So we've used this equivalent decimal uh, method to solve for our part. All right. So now you go ahead and try these. Do now number two, so pause it, uh, copy these down, and then we'll go over them, okay? So on A, you're asked to find how much money is saved if a $90 item is 45% off. So we need to find, essentially, 45% of 90. So with the equivalent decimals, 45% is 0.45 times 90 gives us how much money is saved. So if I do the math, we are saving uh, 0.45 of 90, $40.50, which is reasonable. Because if we're saving half of 90, that's about $45. And this is a little bit less than 45. Okay, So be sure to check if it is, in fact, reasonable. Uh, the second one, 206% of 30 is what number? We could do the percent proportion, or we can literally just translate this. 206%, remember, is 206, that percent, divided by 100. So if I move it over twice, the decimal equivalent is 2.06. Of means multiply, 30. So if I uh, find the product of those two numbers, you'll get 61.8. Right. So 61.8 is 206% of 30, which makes sense. If I have 206% of a number, it's essentially doubling the number, right? So 61.8%. Beware of percent of change. It is possible to have greater than 100% change. I can't have 100% of a thing. I can't have more than 100% of a pizza. But if I say... I had one pizza and then I had five pizzas. You can say that that is a 500% increase. So percent of change could be over 100, right? Because it's not over whole, it's over a starting value. Okay? And then C, what is the retail price of a $20 item if it is marked up by 60%? Well, we can find what 60% of 20 is. So 60% of 20, we recognize we're looking for the part. So we can use the equivalent decimal, which is 0.6 times 20. 0.6 times 20 
is $12. Beware, this is not what the question is asking. This is not how much we're paying if they mark it up by 60%, which makes sense. If it's $20 and they mark it up, it's got to be more than 20 So if you're asked to find retail price, this is a two-step problem. This we just found is the markup in dollars. So how do we find the retail price? you got to add it to the wholesale price. Okay, so I combine it like this. Therefore, the retail price is $32, all right? So just in general, re we're gonna recap, and we want to see this on your paper too. So if you need to pause it and you copy it down, go for it. So in the first one, you have an 18-foot tree grows to 30 feet. What is the percent of change? So if you remember the percent of change uh, proportion here, percent of change over 100, what value goes on the bottom is 18, because that's how the, sh the tree started. And then what is the amount of the growth? What's the amount between 18 and 30? That's 12. What's the difference between the two? So as a percentage, you can say I can divide each of these by 3 by 3. We can go again, and that's 2 over 3. And then we know, because these are all simplified, that this is not going to be a whole percent. So we can go ahead and impo and impo. With the smaller numbers, that's 100 times 2, 200 divided by 3. 66 and two-thirds percent, all right? So this would be 66 and two-thirds percent. And remember the very last thing that you have to indicate for percent of change is the direction. So if it starts low and it goes high, you put your up arrow to see that's a 66 and two-thirds percent growth, all right? The last one says you have a $20 shirt that costs $21.30 with tax. What is a sales tax rate? And a sales tax rate is going to be a percentage. So this essentially is a percent of change question. So this shirt originally cost $20. So 20 is the value we want here. What number goes on the top? Well, it's the amount of the change. So in this case, it's $1.30. So what is $1.30 as a percentage of 20? You could go ahead and impo the 100, go ahead and impo the 100. So we got 130 divided by 20 gives us 6.5. So this thing, the sales tax rate, is a 6.5% sales tax rate because the amount of the taxes as a percentage of how it started pre-tax was 6.5%.